Breaking news just into the Kega 9 newsroom. A cyclist struck by a car in Alameda and Stone Avenue just minutes ago. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Christina Myers. High winds this afternoon caused a fire that started in two cars to quickly spread to nearby apartments. Take a look at the charred remains of the vehicles in what used to be a detached carport. Tonight, we're waiting on the results of an autopsy to find out how a hiker died in Sabino Canyon. Pretty cool opportunity uh -huh. there. Oh, yeah. But what's not too cool is our forecast. Today was nice, but we're going to be warming up. Let's head over to Kyler Diggs with more. One Texas University student is taking the saying, I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Maybe just a little too seriously. Check out what she's cruising through campus in, a pink Barbie Jeep. The Broadway widening project has been controversial from its start. Tonight, the Broadway Coalition, that's the group opposed to the project, is set to protest in Midtown. But they're against more than just the widening work itself. This protest is centered around two women who are looking to start a unique business at Broadway in Tucson. There's a possible new tool in the fight against distracted driving. New York lawmakers are considering allowing police to use a textilizer. It's a device similar to a breathalyzer that can check if you were texting at the time of an accident. I have a feeling you would still want to do that. doesn't matter I, I how old your kids are, nothing. <laughs> and they say if there's not a child there to open up the door and you're an adult and the first in line, you get to open up the door. Yes, <laughs> she'll be there next. All right. And next, we'll have another look at your seven day. You're watching Kagan 9 on your side. Adopt Love, Adopt Local. Rescues and shelters from across southern Arizona came together today to help thousands of people find the newest member of their family. Does your car have a name? No. Okay. We well, have to do this. We name babies, we name pets. <laughs> Why not our cars, right? Maybe we'll come up with some ideas. Okay. Up next, the most popular names chosen by millennials for their rides. A road rage incident on the east side ends with shots being fired. Tucson police say a driver shot at another driver near Harrison and 29th Street. Street. And that's where we find nine on your side's Jennifer Dela Cruz with the latest. Jennifer. Chaos overnight at a music festival in Tempe. Nearly a dozen people rushed to the hospital after concert goers rushed the stage. It happened at the Summer's End Music Festival at Tempe Beach Park. Witnesses say chaos broke out while the band Revolution was on stage. Forty people were hurt. Some trampled over when hundreds tried to get on stage. Fire officials say people at the front of the stage were suffocated from all of the people pushing forward and two women collapsed at the front after having seizures. Nine people were rushed to the hospital, two in serious condition. A triage was set up outside the concert for the others. And the concert resumed tonight, though, with a higher security presence. And take a look at this. A couple in Nogales got quite the surprise when they found a bundle of marijuana had fallen through their carport's roof. It happened a few weeks ago. Now, they thought it was thunder that woke them up in the middle of the night, but went out the next day to find this over 23 pounds of marijuana worth nearly $10,000. And police say it likely fell from an ultralight aircraft that was smuggling it over the border. And just ahead, a hip hop icon right here in Tucson, but he wasn't performing on stage. He was actually sporting a football jersey instead. As you can see, the SUV came to a stop here in the ditch on the side of the road. The teenager still trapped underneath this vehicle. Her father recounted to me earlier today some details of what it was like to see his daughter trapped underneath his own vehicle. He told me that her head was right here by the tire with her shoulder crushed underneath the weight of this tire here. Rural Metro saying now that the teenager is only being treated for a minor shoulder injury. Her father says he feels so fortunate that she wasn't hurt any more than she was. And he also tells me that she is in stable condition and doing well at the hospital with her mother. At 100 feet tall, the sign is roughly the height of an eight-story building. That's half the size of this building, Tucson's second tallest. As many people don't know the rules, and today is really about education, most people are just walking away with a warning. During one of these most recent breaks, the thieves tried to smash in this window. You can see there are multiple attempts here, but it clearly didn't work. Now, Yvonne tells me that this window has laminated glass, which is stronger. And since they couldn't get in this one, she's now replacing all of her windows with that same type of glass. This is the private crossing right here. So this is where the collision happened. But as you can see, the train pushed the truck down the tracks until it fell off and landed there down the embankment. And then even further past that, you can see it took quite a ways for the train to finally come to 
to a stop. Reaction to that decision was pretty split on our Facebook page. You had a lot of people who were very upset, like Diana Yepis here, who says, quote, this is the worst example we could be setting. Threatened to blow up a school, walk away with a slap on the wrist. But others disagree, like Javier Velasquez here, who says, why ruin a child's entire life over one stupid mistake? We'd like to hear what you have to say. You can join the conversation on our Kega 9 Facebook page. The hay is still in the same place, covered in a blue tarp now, as you can see. But when the metal went flying, half of the barn landed all the way over here. I carefully make the incision, then pull the skin apart and puncture the membrane to insert the breathing tube. I, I'm like sweating right now. That's unbelievable. <laughs> you actually feel like you're doing it on a person. Well, the scene is right on the edge of a housing development. It's at the 2300 block of Calle Arroyo Lindo. That's near Drexel and Tucson Boulevard. Now, take a look. This is where, where we're told the sexual assault happened here on this walkway. Police say the woman was walking home from a store with her baby in a stroller when a man approached her with a gun, brought her to this path and attacked her. After an extensive search yesterday on both the ground and in the air, that suspect is still on the loose. So detectives were back out here today looking for evidence, anything that that could help them find this man. Footprints, a piece of clothing, or anything else that he might have lost as he was fleeing from the scene. And Tucson police have also told us the area that they're looking in. Take a look at this. Now, that red square that you see, it may seem small, but this is actually a very wide area that they're searching in. It goes from Drexel on the north down to Bilby, and then from Campbell on the west all the way over to Country Club. And they say the suspect might have been in this area anytime from 9.30 yesterday morning to 12.30 in the afternoon. And again, the incident did happen right around noon yesterday. So hearing that, you might think how brazen this attacker must have been to do this right in broad daylight. But when we were talking to neighbors earlier today, they say that because it happened at that time, pretty much everybody was at work or at school, so they didn't hear or see anything. So for that reason, police need your help identifying this suspect. If you heard or saw anything in this wide area that seemed out of place yesterday, you're asked to call 911 or 88 crime and you can remain anonymous. For now, live on the south side, Christina Myers, Kega 9 on your side. Two boys swept away in a wash during yesterday's storms. It happened at a school bus stop as parents looked on helplessly. But one mother says she was in the right place at the right time. In this story you'll see only on nine, she describes those terrifying moments. So by this point, all of this road is flooding downward into the wash. Everything is just the water's coming faster and faster. Amber Wilkinson says she got her daughter off the bus at Saurita Road in Wilmot just in time. Her daughter ran to safety in the car, but there were two more students on the bus. As Wilkinson says, the water was three feet high and quickly rising. The water was up to here. But the boys were let off the bus anyway. And all I saw is the fourth grader just get swept away and the sixth grader tried to reach for him and got swept away too. So at that point I just started, I looked over and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is real. Wilkinson quickly sprang into action. And I ran into the wash and was up to my knees and I got one by the wrist and one by the backpack and they're both just on their backs, just panicked. They can't get up and it's just, I just, God, don't let me let either one of them go. I cannot let a mom lose their child. The raging water pulling all three further down the wash, rocks, branches, and other debris hitting them as Wilkinson worked to pull the boys to higher ground. She finally got them to safety. But now, as she's still reeling from the experience, Wilkinson says she thinks the bus driver made a bad judgment call. I mean, she should have, when she turned around and she saw the water coming, she should have shut her doors and kept going. I would have dealt with following the bus. That would have been better than these two boys that almost lost their lives. That bus driver is now suspended with pay as the Vail School District investigates her actions. Pima County Sheriff's Department is also doing a separate criminal investigation. The director of transportation for Vail, John Noons, says the bus driver has been with the district for two and a half years, and this is her first complaint. You can still very clearly see all of the damage here, all these broken windows. Now, the owner tells me that what the thieves would do is use large rocks or bricks to smash in the window. Then after each break in, the owner would board up the windows like you can see see here, but the thieves would then just come back and move on to the next one. If it's a single incident, okay, it might be random or whatever, but somebody is clearly targeting the shop. 
Catavino's owner, Yvonne Fouché, is cleaning up broken glass for the third time since Christmas morning. Each time, it's the same thing. Once the thieves get in the store, they grab as much wine as they can. They get everything that they can, and there's probably been five, six cases. Five or six cases of wine stolen, valued at a couple thousand dollars. Now, this isn't the first time that Yvonne has had a string of break ins like this. When she first opened eight years ago and then again about a year and a half ago, these two windows here at her front door were both smashed in multiple times in a very short period of time. Yvonne still opened up for business today, though, cleaning up around customers. I wasn't going to let it ruin my Christmas, so it was like, okay, this happened and we're going to deal with it. When Ryland Morgan was diagnosed with sensory processing disorder at the age of five, golf was part of his physical therapy. But it was also Ryland's greatest connection to his grandfather, or Pap Pap, Harold Edwards. Harold died last year, just days after Ryland's seventh birthday. And shortly after, Ryland's disorder made golf clubs too heavy for him to carry and swing, so he had to stop playing. He was not only getting self defeated for himself, but then he also thought he was losing that connection with my dad. Ryland's mother, Heather, didn't know what to do until one day. She saw an article in the Green Valley newspaper. Custom golf club maker Bob Barrett was looking for a disabled or less fortunate child to make a set of clubs for. I've gotten so much out of it without giving back, and I wanted to find some way to give something back. And I thought, oh, we'll never get chosen. That doesn't happen, you know? And then I kept um, hearing my dad say, do it. And then, um, so then I did. Mr. Barrett got plenty of applications for his free custom clubs. I got quite a few, but his just was heads and shoulders above everybody else. And today, the big reveal. Look what we got for you. Oh, <gasps> thank you. All righty. On the way. And the clubs are more than just a gift, but the start of an unlikely friendship. We're all probably used to hitting one or two potholes on our daily commute and one about this size on a whole stretch of roadway, really not all that out of the usual. But now imagine if they covered the entire roadway so much so that you had to swerve off the road in order to avoid hitting them. Well, that's exactly what one neighborhood near Picture Rocks is dealing with. So they reached out to nine on your side for help. Driving on Manville Road is kind of like driving in a minefield. I mean, it looks like it's been bombed. Crews work to patch the potholes today, just 24 hours after Nine on Your Side called. But that's a temporary fix. And we're not just talking your normal size potholes here, like this one right here, about two and a half by four feet wide. Neighbors say they've had enough. They've had thousands of dollars in damage by hitting the potholes, and drivers swerving to miss them often go off the road or into oncoming traffic. Me and my wife came down the other night, and a car bounced over into our lane and just missed hitting us head on. So how do you put dollars or budgets or anything on that kind of... This, this is life. To me, this is life and death. But the Pima County Department of Transportation says it does come down to finances. It's a it's a big issue, a big problem out there, and do you know there's not enough money right now to be able to handle it all. County Transportation Director Priscilla Cornelio says 60% of the paved roadways the county is responsible for are in poor or failing condition. We depend on gas tax revenues and vehicle license tax fees. That's the funds that we get to repair our roadways. And those have been declining. I'm getting less now than I got seven years ago. The county is now asking legislators to raise that gas tax by 10 cents a gallon to fix more roads more quickly. Come on, Dad. Come on, Dad. Come on, Dad. A song to pass the time, carefully watching the screen of arriving passengers. Oh, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. There's a bunch of passengers arriving. Shh. Checking and rechecking the flight list. Even a dance as excitement builds. But for nine year old Faith and five year old Josiah, an hour waiting in the airport is nothing compared to the last 13 months. My brother, he didn't understand what was going on at first. I miss mom and dad. They stayed here in Tucson with their aunt and uncle and two cousins, making a full house with four kids ages three to 14. Mom was able to come back and visit three times. Dad, 
only two. But now, come on. Huh? Ah! Daddy! Daddy! he's home for good. Hey. It's just being, having your life back, you know, your real life, the kids waking up to them. So getting back to normal is, is just a great feeling. And right away, Josiah and Faith got him caught up on some of the new normals. Look at him. I already did. I know. Oh, oh, man, you guys are big. Hey, how big am I? Oh. That's what it looks like. I feel great. I mean, I feel really good oh, finally being home. It's a long year. Well, and the best part of this story, mom comes home tomorrow, too. And again, we will be there for the moment that the family is finally all together again. First complaint.